So now I'm programmed. I was called to come and diagnose this vehicle. Yeah. You can see I'm having problem with communication with image processing in the main body ECU and also having problem in so let me go to reports. I was called to come and diagnose this vehicle that the light and the lane departure lights are on. So this is the fault in the system. So these are the fault, the image processing, which deals with this camera over here. So now what I'll do is I'll check for CAN connection on the camera and also check for power and ground. Then if I'm having all those things, then that means there's for the module the module is faulty, so I have to replace it. So let me go back and check my power and ground first. I have set up my scope and I have set the voltage to 2 volts per division. So because I'm about to test a 12 volt voltage, so I have set it 2 volts per division so that I can get the voltage. So what I'll do now is I'll test for the voltage on this connect on this connector and with this connector with this connector sorry for the glare with this connector the pin pin seven is the power and pin ten is the ground so I'll test for the power first then I'll go to the ground and text for the can connection for now. So what I'll do is I'll probe to pin seven. Oh, focus. Yeah. I'll probe to pin seven, which is this. So I'll probe it to pin seven, and now you can see my voltage is around twelve volts and it is above the my scope scale so I you can't see any mark so what i'll do is i'll increase my scope scale to five volts so watch this one i'll change it to five volts yes now when i change it to five volts now you can see i'm have i'm seeing the 12 volt 12 point, yeah 12.6 volt line so you can see i'm now seeing the 12.6 volt line so so when you when you count it this one is with a division so one box is i now i've set it that one box is five volts so from the line where the green line is to one box is five volts then another one ten volts then you see it's between the middle which is 12.5 which is 2.5 volts added to the 10 volt that i've calculated so this is how we use to calculate the actual voltage in it so now I've tested the power and now it is working. So what I'll do now is I also test for ground with it, but I will change the scope lead. So I'll, I'll pin the ground and it, I, I should still get this 12 volt line if I pin it to the ground on this socket, on this image processing socket. So you can see now I'm in pin 7 and pin 10 is the ground so now I'll, I'll set pin 10 so now i've set my ground to pin 10 to this yellow wire and I'll, I'll i'll put it in pin 10 pin 10 is the power so this one is this one is 12 11 then 10 so i'll put it in 10 and I should get 12 volts. So you can see I've pierced both ground and power. Mm. I'm still having the 12.6 volt or 12.9 volt. That means my power and ground are okay with the scope, they are okay. And for load testing too, I can load test and make sure that they are okay. Which means I can use a test light to check or a high voltage light to check the voltage. 
so you can now see that i have jumped those to power and ground and now my test light is lit and now you can see the voltage has dropped to 12.2 yeah, the minimum voltage is 12.2 it has now dropped and even i can measure it with the trigger so with this scope i can go to trigger if i want to measure the voltage so i'll just move this trigger this is the trigger and you can see the voltage is changing at the top so i place it at the exact trigger and you can see it is measuring 12.2 volts so when i take the test light out which i've low test the socket when i take the test light out so let me take the test light out to prevent the fuse from blowing so i cover the stand up so you can see my test leads are covered up my test leads are covered up to prevent any shot so now you can see the voltage has increased a bit and it's around 12.1 so it's around sorry it's around 12.6 so what i'll do again is i'll push i'll push my trigger up a bit and you can see on the same line on the same line it is 12.6 so the trigger can be used to measure the voltage you click on the trigger then you move this yellow line to measure the voltage that you are getting to help you know the exact voltage so now from here because i'm going to test the can system also to see how communication is on the on that network i will move i'll move my test lead to the other side to pin i'll move my test lead so now as i said i'm about to test the can network on this socket on this same socket can high and can low are on pin are on pin 12 and pin 6 so let me test for can high first okay, let me test for can so you can see you can see the can communication on this network and please pay notice to my time base Pay notice to my time base is around 5,000 microseconds so what I'll do now is because the voltage is around 2.4 it's around 2.8 and the minimum is 2 point uh, it's 1 point 1 point 800 millivolt what I'll do now is with the scope whenever you are using the scope voltage is used to extend like it's used to extend the line vertically like w w what you want to see if you want to see it well you use your voltage to extend it like upwards to e extend it but if you want to stretch it this way you use your time base so if you want it to be close you use your time base if you want it to be uh, opened use your time base so the more time you give the closer it becomes the less time you give the bigger it becomes or the the bigger you see what you are searching for and if you want to use voltage also when you are using voltage the more voltage you give the smaller it becomes so when you reduce the voltage per division of your scope then you begin to see that the feed that you are seeing is opening so let's see this one we are seeing it very small because uh, it's on five volt per division so what i'll do now is i'll go to channel i'll click on the channel then it's already on channel one selected channel is on channel one so what i'll now do is i'll increase the vo i'll decrease the voltage from i'll decrease the voltage so now from five volt per division I'll decrease it to one volt per division and you can see the more I decrease the voltage you see how big my you see how how, how 
my information has opened up with the voltage so now let's go to time base if I, I want to get more information on my screen i'll go to time base and increase my time base so now you can see when i'm decreasing the time base you can see i'm getting the the screen is enlarging and i'm i'm getting to see the actual information so when i increase my time base it will start going closer and closer and closer as i increase my time base and this principle applies on every scope that you use so you use the time base to get more information on your buffer or on your screen or on the page that you want so when i'm increasing the time base so you can see how info, the information that i'm getting so when i want to so you can see now i am around 20 milli, uh, milliseconds so let me go back 10 milliseconds you can see the information that i'm getting so sometimes you set up your scope the way you want to so if with this that i've opened you see the reason why the line is way up is because my vote is around 500 millisecond uh, millivolt per division and now my voltage uh, my time is around two two milliseconds two point zero milliseconds 2.0 milliseconds so you can see 2.0 milliseconds and my voltage is around 500 millisecond millivolts so you can see how it has expand so now if i want to change my settings i'll go to channel so that i can increase the voltage so when i go to channel change it to one volt per division and you can see how small my voltage uh, how small my image has become so the voltage is used to expand uh, the voltage is used to extend yeah expand like this if you want to expand it like this you use the voltage if you want to extend it or get more information if you want to extend it or get more information you use your time base to do it and you can also use the trigger to set where you want it to trigger so you can see now is i'm getting this information so if i want it to be a bit clearer i go to time i click on time time then change my time base so let's say my time is now on one milliseconds let me change it again it's now on 500 microseconds and now you can see the image has changed and the information that i'm getting has changed so what i'll do now i'll continue my diagnosis so uh, this one is the can loan which is on tw pin 12 is the can loan so now i'll check for the can high the reason why i've set it to one volt is with the can high this image will go up and i'm using only one channel on my scope but i'm using uh, the channel 2 as a reference so that you see my zero point so now i have this one is in pin 6 and you can now see there is communication on that network so now i have nothing to do rather than to condemn the module because i have to check the pin fitment and the pin fitment if the pin fitment is okay then that means the module is faulty because i'm having my power and my ground and also i'm having my can high and can low so there should be a communication with it so if any module is reporting they are not able to communicate with it then that means it is a faulty module that means i don't have to do further diagnosing when it comes to communication issue when you get your power and your ground and the network going to it then that means you or with some modules too you have to check ignition because with some modules the ignition power going to it is what turns the module on so if you don't have your ignition power going to it, when you get your ignition power, when you get your power and your ground, and you load test them and everything is okay, your can is working perfectly, then that means you have a faulty module. So with this one, I can drag, I can drag it down. When whenever you are with this machine, whenever you are on channel A, 
whenever you are on a channel or you click on a channel and you click on a channel when you move back and for that's the voltage when you move up and down that's the position so i can bring it down oh sorry not now i was on time base so let me click on channel so you can see whenever i change the time base you can see it clearly clearly so let me go to channel let me click on channel so now i am on channel and i've selected channel one so if i want to select channel two i'll just click on this and it will go to channel two so you see this it has moved to the green so when i click on it again channel one it has moved to the yellow so now if i want to bring it down i bring the whole thing down so it brings it down and you can see let me show you this thing so this one is the channel one they, they, they've written one on it so you can see one is on it so when i move it down to this that means my zero point my zero point is starting on this line so from the zero point you count one two then point five point six or point five so you can see because it's a can high so it's around five point five point eight sorry four point two or four point three because I can't hide so when you count it from here so if you count it from here now I've, I've the one is on this line so one two three then four so you can see it's, it's, it's almost on the four the four line and that's how other scopes too they will, they will label it with the scopes that uses the laptop they will label it here like pico scope and mazi scope and other scope the e scope you they've labeled it on this line so now i'll tell the customer he is having a faulty module and if he's ready to change it then fine maybe he'll call me or maybe he takes it to somewhere else to do it but i was just i was called to do the diagnosing and now i'm done with the diagnosing so with the communication issue it's a faulty module thank you for watching subscribe to my channel for more videos so you can you can see you see now i've erased all the fourth code and and it is gone even though the socket is out i've erased the fourth code and it is gone but when i enter into the modules when i enter into the module okay when i go to trouble code it will come up again so you see it's also current in history and now all i have to do is to tell the customer he's having an issue with image processing uh, let me go back uh, let me make sure i entered the right place so okay and you see there was no fault but the moment i enter into it it will give me all the fault code again and the moment i erase everything will be erased and you see no fault code but the moment i go back to it i'll get, I have no fourth code whereas the socket is out so you see I have the same fourth code again so I'll speak with the customer and we will change the module thank you for watching once again subscribe to my channel for more videos